Do you know what a dead game looks like? I do. Let me show you. This is Suicide Squad, something that was supposed to be a AAA game, and as you all know, completely forgotten, tossed to the ways of time. People barely even play it anymore. And we all theorized as to why. We said it was a bad writing. We said Rocksteady lost its edge. But there was something more sinister behind the curtain. Something we didn't know until now. I know, I know, I talk about Suicide Squad a lot, and to be honest, it's because of the fact that I love the franchise, I love the IP, and I love Arkham, I love Batman, and can you blame me? I really want Suicide Squad, and I really wanted Gotham to work out, but unfortunately, they were major flops, and that hurt, and many wondered why. To answer that question, we have to ask, who is Sweet Baby, and what did they do? First, let's rewind to 2018. The company Sweet Baby was founded, and it is a narrative development and consulting studio based in Montreal working around the globe, where their mission is to tell a better, more empathetic story while diversifying and enriching the video game industry. Now I'm going to go ahead and list out a bunch of games that they have worked on, and tell me, do you spot a kind of trend going on here? Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, Gotham Knights, Forspoken, Saints Row, and Mortal Kombat 1. Now not only were all of these terrible games, but they shared something else in common. They were all projects of Sweet Baby Inc. Now I was pissed. When I found out that they were responsible for all of these games, my jaw hit the floor and I was fuming with anger. And other gamers had that same reaction too. And one took it a step further by making a curator list of every single game Sweet Baby has ever touched. Now, that list is at 144,000 and climbing of all the people that really don't want to play a Sweet Baby game, especially if they had any involvement in it. Now, if you're asking yourself, why do gamers care so much about how their games are produced and why woke culture is such a bad thing for their game, I made a video going over this exact point. So go ahead and take a watch on that and then come back to this video. Now, if you thought this ended with a curator list, you are very mistaken here. Sweet Baby took personal offense to the curator list and its creation. So much so that they went to Twitter to incite their fans to harass the person that created the list in the first place. That is absurd for them to do. Now Sweet Baby sympathizers went ahead and got onto the Steam page to leave their own comments on the entire curator's page. And this is where it gets downright despicable. Let's start off with something light that they posted. Video games are not meant for right wingers. I guess to them, your political leanings matter for playing a game that's just insane but it gets worse they also claim that if you're against sbi then you are racist since when was that a thing but i love that they played this card and we'll get to that in a second because the next one is just downright insane i can't read the next one because of youtube tos but to incite violence especially against kids because you do not agree with them is insane to me i can't confirm if that was a sweet baby employee or not this is the mentality of of those people. However, let's talk about a Sweet Baby employee, one that goes by the name of Lego Butts on Twitter. Now, this all starts on February 29th, where Lego Butts gets very butthurt about the curator list that is made. And others in his circle also went ahead and decided to harass the guy that made the curator list and to go so far as to get his account banned just because they don't really agree with their way of thinking. Then in comes Grums, who gives us lore about Lego Butts and who he actually is. Now Lego Butts and Zoe Quinn, a name you guys might be familiar with, decided to go ahead and DDoS the website of the fine young capitalists just because they didn't have the same viewpoints or whatever reasons that they had at the time to target these people. Now the fine young capitalists are people that promote women in gaming and these people who go ahead and say that we want inclusivity, we want diversity in gaming and we want female representation and so on and so forth are the same people attacking those who actually do the damn work. Hypocrisy at its finest. And the reason why this is so important to talk about is the fact that they reflect this even in their work. Here, let me show you. So Lego Butts has a very keen obsession about white people and how they don't like them. Cool. No one gives a shit. But what's very interesting to note here in this entire figure is this little excerpt right here. We have to look at a story and narrative as 
just one of the things that we can innovate on. Like when you bring someone in from a different culture, from a different background, from a different gender, they're going to create something that we haven't seen before. The way that we look at demographics is that we go, okay, the majority of our player base is, let's say, a white male. So we're going to make stuff for white males. But if you make something from the perspective of an Asian trans woman and it's really strong, then it will work for people. People crave new stories. I just want to go ahead and stop here for a second. I'm an Asian guy, right? I'm a baby panda with a rice hat on his head, okay? I am cute as fuck. Don't make me Kung Fu Panda your ass. I literally am a part of a minority, right? Just for the sake of argument. No one ever in the entire gaming space says, you know what the big problem about gaming is? It's not the microtransaction. It's not the, you know, live services. It's white male gamers. Yeah, fuck off with that, honestly. It's more about the fact that a game like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, a game that just came out, is focused on an audience. It is made in Japan. It is made by Japanese people, yet they have Barrett, yet they have a dog named Red 13. That has more diversity than any of the stuff Sweet Baby has even put their grubby mitts on. And on top of that, again, they never took into consideration what the West thinks. It's always been about, hey, our player base is in Japan, you know, we're going to make a really good story and we're going to have people enjoy it with enjoyable characters. Also, side note, if anyone's ever looked at Pokemon, I've never looked at a Pokemon and just went ahead and said, you know what? Pikachu needs to be more black. What the fuck are they talking about? Also, you know how I said I'd get back to the whole racist comment kind of thing? Well, I'm just going to leave this on the screen. You guys can read it for yourself. And Lego butts, not a good look. Look, at the end of the day, all we want are just good games and we vote with our wallet. Something I'm going to point out very specifically here because Sweet Baby wants to act like they're the victim in all of this and they want to go ahead and say we're only targeting them now because we have very disingenuous criticisms for them. Well, no, because games like Saints Row and games like Forspoken have been out for a couple of years now. No one liked them when they launched, no one likes them at all. And of course, we voted with our wallets and and they flopped. Same with Suicide Squad. We did not know you were involved with it and it's a little disingenuous that you would hide the fact that you are involved with these games but also at the same time you know what you're doing is wrong here. We want good games. We already live in a world where all of the IPs we used to have early 2000s I'm talking about. The early IPs that we had are all gone. The IPs that remain are the ones that we have attached ourselves to and we want to see good games about. We want to see better games about them. And the fact that you have aided and embedded in destroying games and destroying developers and studios just to promote your selfish, entitled viewpoints that you think are superior and no one else's voice matters and you just want to bully everyone else, go fuck yourself. Honestly, we want to be left alone and we want to enjoy the shit we want. We don't want to see your bullshit plastered on our screens when we want to sit back and relax. Seriously, this is just too much at this point now. Now we have to ask ourselves, what's next? Now that we know that Sweet Baby exists, what they do, and how they've destroyed so many games under their provision that they have been contracted for, I don't think the industry is going to want this kind of flack for their new games. And on top of that, a lot of companies and developers are not going to be so keen to add on contractors that will make their games flop the moment they come out or if any company or studio tries to partner themselves with sweet baby well guess what we're gonna be able to see through that because their idiotic writing is kind of apparent especially since we've been exposed to it for many years at this point now and sweet baby knows exactly that hence why they decided to run so in short sweet baby you can run you can hide you can rebrand all you want but remember, we're looking for you. You can't run forever. <laughs> yeah.